Hi everyone, welcome to this week's recitation. So we're going to be working on event-driven programming today. couple announcements. Um, your assignment should be graded, um, all assignments 1 through 5 if you've submitted. Your exam grade should be in, and you have a quiz and your JavaScript assignment due this week. If you have any questions, email, lab hours, office hours, anything works. And the solution to this week's recitation task is not going to be posted, so only initial guide is posted. So just pay more attention, I guess, and during the video so you kind of know what's going on. And other than that, let's get started. So what is event-driven programming? So it's when you write a program that runs based on an event. So let's say clicking a button, writing some text. It waits for something to happen before actually executing anything programs we were writing before would just show up like html that we were writing before it's like you press open a browser or view and default browser or run and it just shows up now when we're working with javascript we put some behavior some events from changes and things like that okay so today's task is we're going to be creating a form for a parallax motor so it's going to be this yellow form right here we're going to be recreating this and Parallax Motors has closed their previous fiscal year, and they want to calculate the total sales for their previous year as well as the expected sales for their current year by using this HTML form. Okay, so now to do that, there's a couple things we need to review. First are these requirements. So what are all these things that we have have on this form? We haven't used all of this before. Just a note, a lot of this assignment is going to be work on your own or at least try it on your own first, and then we come back and discuss the result. It's gonna be different from before. It's because a lot of HTML and a good amount of JavaScript we've covered already. So we're gonna be like applying that today. Okay, the requirements. The sales for the Eastern and Western divisions will be entered manually by the sales manager. So now what does that mean? So now these two lines here, Eastern and Western, and they have this input text box here. So that's what we're going to be coding. We're going to have this line and then this input text box. I'll give you the code for this input text box on the couple other things. The total sales for the year should be displayed in the calculate previous year total button. So now that is going to be this button. Obviously, it's not the nicest looking button, but it's the basic HTML button. Radio boxes. We're going to have a high radio box and the low radio box. The high is going to give you the expected sales increase of 30%. And the low, it's not going to give you a decrease, it's just going to give you a lesser increase. So we're just going to do 10%. And then at the end, you're going to output the current year expected sales based on the high and low. Now, what is a radio box? So a radio box are going to be these buttons right here. The main thing or main feature about a radio box is that in a selection of radio boxes, when one is clicked, the others cannot be marked. So it's not like select all that apply, it's only select one. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is create a recitation 7 folder and create an HTML document named event driven one underscore js and type the basic H shell HTML. So this is a shell. We're going to have a title of parallax motors. Um, this shell should also be in the recitation files posted on Canvas. I also have the toolkit, which I'm going to show you next, posted, and the initial guide is also posted. The initial guide is not going to have the JavaScript code. The JavaScript code is what we're going to be doing right now. Okay. So now this is the toolkit that I was talking about. This toolkit is also posted. These slides are also posted. But in the toolkit, I think it's like a PDF version where you can copy-paste. So the three different things we're going to be using today is the text box, the button, and the radio buttons. So the text box is what you saw initially, like the Eastern Division and then that white box where you can type things in. That is an input tag. And you're going to have a type is equal to text. Notice later we're going to check type is equal to button or type is equal to radio. So that changes based on what we kind of want. The one thing that you want to customize towards your application or form is going to be the ID. The ID is like a unique identifier that links the label with the button. And we're going to be referencing this ID throughout our code to change values and update the numbers and things like that. Now this on change method you don't have to worry about. You can just have it there when you leave it empty. It's just, let's say, well, while or 
after something is typed in, you want something to happen, that's going to go in the on change. We're going to put our code in the on click. So notice the input type or the input tag doesn't have the on click attribute. That's only for the button or the radios, radio buttons. So there's two different ways that you can create buttons in JavaScript. You can put the input tag and change the type to button, or you can just have a button tag. And the ID is going to be, you know, my button or calculate previous year sales, anything like that. Now inside this on click, inside these quotes are where we're going to add our JavaScript code. So it's a little bit different than when we were doing last recitation where we had the script tag and we were writing code in there. Here we're going to be writing code almost inside the HTML. And inside these quotation marks you can use JavaScript comments, which would be the double backslash. Okay. And then lastly, these radio buttons. So you're going to have multiple radio buttons for this assignment and you're going to name them accordingly and ID them accordingly because we want to reference them accordingly because the value is going to change like for high and for low for the assignment you're going to have like a, a number associated with the high value and a number associated with the low value so that's going to change so that's why we want to keep the id name separate okay so this is just kind of i just wrote what i was talking about okay and then once you create all that we're going to change the background color to yellow so what I want you to do now is using the shell and using the toolkit and using the background color equals yellow, I want you to create this HTML form on your own because this is very much of a review of HTML and basic JavaScript that we've already worked with. And just take five to ten minutes, pause the video and work on that and come back and we'll discuss more about the actual JavaScript. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've worked on something, and we're going to go down to the JavaScript part. Before we do that, I'm just going to show you what I have. So this is the initial guide. This is what's posted. The solution is not posted. So, let's say you open a browser. This is something you should see. Notice when you type stuff in. nothing's gonna really work you know you can just click but like when you click a button you know nothing pops up nothing changes so that's what we're going to be changing there's three things that we're going to be changing it's going to be all of the on click attributes so our first on click is on line 18 then we have on 24 and 25 so it's each button basically every time you click the button you want something to change so the first button is going to be about calculating the total for the past year. Now, to calculate the total for the past year, you can use this little two pieces of code. Var total previous year is equal to number eastern dot value plus number western dot value. So now this number or this word number is changing eastern dot value and getting its number value inputted in there because notice how in input text um, tags you can put in like letters and numbers so you would have something you can put in letters in here but you just want the number value and once you get that value you're going to store that value in sales previous year dot value so there's a couple confusing things here. Where is Eastern and Western coming from and where is sales previous year coming from? So now let's go to the code. When I made my Eastern and Western division input tags, I put an ID of Eastern and Western to you know relate to the actual type of um, tag that we have, or what type of input that we have. Now, what we're doing is referencing those IDs. See how when I highlight it, it highlights or surrounds this box over here. We're referencing that ID and we're putting dot value. So we're getting the numerical value by putting it in this number. And we're doing the same way here. So number in parentheses ID dot value will give you the numerical value. I think it says the same thing here. The number function is used below to ensure that the sales data entered in the text boxes are treated as numbers. 
steps. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to put this in the quotation marks. And you press save. And next, we're going to... Oh, one second. We still have to cover the sales previous year. Sales previous year. Notice when I highlight it, it's highlighting this ID. So we want to reference this value in a different place or area of the code. And this var total previous year only has scope within this onClick method or onClick attribute or event attribute. If you want to use the total previous year value somewhere else, we're going to put this total previous year value inside this ID, which is for the previous year total sales, which is the another input tag that we're working on. So if I kind of just show it to you in what we're seeing in real life, this is the one with input tag with the Eastern division, Eastern ID, and this is the Western ID. Now, clicking this button is that is what we just wrote, the on click. That's what's happening right here, these two lines. Now, let's say you calculate the previous year total. It's actually, you want it to pop up over here, previous year total sales. So to do that, that's why we have an ID here, sales previous year. You can call it something else, sales prev year or, you know, whatever you want. It just has to stay the same here and here. Okay, now next. Now we're going to estimate for the current year. To do the estimate, here is some helpful code. So you're going to do the increased value is equal to original value times the 1 plus increase. So notice for the high radio button, it's going to be 30% increase. So you're going to do 0.3. And for the low, it's going to be a 10% increase. So that's going to be 0.1. So using this, we're going to create a variable to hold a high percent increase. So 0.3 is going to be our high increase. And we're going to put it into that same exact formula that we saw on the slide. The increased value, or the high sales, we're creating a new variable, is going to be equal to the sales dot previous year dot value times one plus high increase. So we're increasing the previous year sale by 30%. Once we do that, we save it in this variable, and then you could probably get a really long decimal. This two fixed method is going to round it down to the nearest two places like the hundreds and it's going to assign put that value into sales current year dot value notice how when I highlight sales current year dot value it also highlights it over here and over here so that once you save it into sales dot current year value it's going to display where the ID occurs so the ID occurs in this last um, input text and that's where it's going to occur so you do the same thing for the low. It's going to be the same exact code except you change it to point 0.1. We would also save it to the same variable because you want the same thing to change if you click low. Now, if this is a little confusing, I'm going to show it to you actually in the browser. So now let's say you put 123 million for the Eastern Division and you put like 12 million for Western Division. You calculate previous year total. When I click this button, it's going to pop up in this input text box. Now, that's the previous year total sales. Well, now I want an estimate for the current year. We're going to put in, let's say you want a high estimate, clicked high. It gives you a pop-up in the input text. And if you want a low, you can click low and it should change. And you can go back and forth as many times as you want. The main thing here is keeping the ID name the same and referencing it inside the different event attribute JavaScript code because that's how the number is actually going to change. Once you do that, you should have a working HTML form. So I hope that makes sense. Um, feel free to watch the video again. If there's anything that you don't understand from this initial guide, watch previous recitation videos, go through notes, because this should all be very similar, other than the new tags that we started, the input tags, button tags, and things like that. Other than that, that should be it. Your Attendance code is going to be the word brown. And have a good day. Thank you.